everything, please. Hold it, please. Sorry, David. This is a rehearsal of one of the most popular television programs that the BBC transmits. Do you recognize it? Jukebox Jury, that's right. I'm sure many of you have seen it. But have you ever wondered how it is that this program actually reaches you? How it's possible for you to sit in your school or home and actually see what we're doing here in the studios in London? Now today, we want to try and explain just this thing how it is that television itself works. And explain, too, why we have to have all these cameras and technicians here just to produce one program for you. Now, we've probably taken up enough time of this rehearsal. Let's go through to the school's television studio and look at this problem in detail. Well, that was a quick change, wasn't it? And here we are in the school studio again. Now, you've already heard about radio waves and how these can be used to carry speech and music through space. And in a very similar way, we can use them to carry the electrical signals which represent your television set. Now, there are two extra problems in television. One is to take this scene in the studio and to convert it into electrical impulses, which we can then broadcast out into space. And the second problem is to remake that picture on your television screen once you receive those signals on your set. Let's begin by considering three things. First, the camera. Secondly, the human eye. And thirdly, the television camera itself. Now, in the case of the ordinary camera, the light goes from the object through a lens onto a sensitive place at the back. This sensitive plate is the photographic plate and it undergoes a chemical change when the light hits it. And by dipping it in suitable solutions, you can make your permanent photographic image. Now, in the case of the human eye, the light again comes through the lens onto a sensitive surface at the back of your eye, called the retina. Now, no permanent chemical change takes place here. Instead, a series of little impulses are sent by the nerve fibers back to your brain. Now, a very similar thing happens in the television camera itself. Again, a lens system focuses the light onto a sensitive plate at the back. But this doesn't undergo chemical change, it changes electrically. And an electrical image is built up. And this then can be fed off in a series of electrical pulses along the cable, as you see. So the two are very similar. Now, you might very well ask, but how can we turn light into electricity? Well, there are one or two ways we can do this. Let's look at this simple demonstration here. Here is a beam of light coming from this lamp along here and falling on a sensitive element here, which produces an electric current when the light falls on it. And you can see that on the meter. It's reading more or less full scale. Now, you watch what happens when I put my hand in the way. In we go. And as soon as I cut the light out, then the electrical reading falls. So here is a simple way of converting light into electricity. And this is what we do on this sensitive plate in the television camera. But this is, of course, only half the story. We've not only got to produce these pulses, but we've got to feed them out in a proper systematic method. Now, let me take you to another demonstration to see you, show you how we do this. Now, here, as you see, we've got a black diamond shape on a white background on this board. Now, what we're going to try and do is to reproduce this pattern on an oscilloscope screen. This is a Solatron storage oscilloscope, which is really very much like your television receiver. And what we're going to do is to reproduce this pattern on the screen. Now, we have a little peephole here, and let me first show you that if this is moved about on this pattern, then the spot of light on the oscilloscope follows it. Alan here is going to move this to and fro, up and down, and you'll see that wherever the peephole goes, so the spot of light on the receiver follows it. Well, now let's do this in a systematic kind of way. Let's start on the left-hand top corner. 
And Alan's going to move this across, and he's going to say white when he sees a white patch, and black when he sees black. He's going across now. White, 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 white. And now he flies back and starts again a little lower down. White, white, and when he white, sees a black white, patch, black, he's going to black, operate a switch white, white, which prevents white, the light spot white. showing. Back again, coming down, white, white, going across. White. Black. Now the switch goes, black. you see. White, 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 white. And then back again. White, 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 white. Black, 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 white, 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 white. And so we can go on like this and build up a pattern on the oscilloscope screen just like that on the bench in front. Here we go again. Now really, this is exactly what we do on the television receiver, except we do this very much faster. In, instead of having about five or six lines, as we've got on the screen now, we have hundreds of lines. And we reproduce this 25 times a second. Oh, you say, but I don't see those lines. I think all the lines are there all the time. They're not being traced out like this on my television receiver. Well, what we rely here is on the sluggishness of your vision. The fact that your eye can't follow things if they happen too quickly. Now let me just prove this to you by a very simple demonstration. Now here I've got a row, a full set of small electric light bulbs, and one row of them is a light, as you can see. I've just got them switched on. And if I turn this little switch here, I can arrange to switch the other one on, and so forth and so on. And only one row is a light at any given moment. Now, if I turn this round faster and faster, <clears throat> you're going to find it difficult to follow that. In particular, if I turn on a motor and get this to do it for me, now, you wait and see. You won't be able to see in a minute. There, you don't realize that only one is on at a time. You think they're all on together. But I'll slow it up again. There, you can see them now, just one at a time, but if I do it fast enough, they all appear to come on together. And that's what's happening on your television screen. The whole picture appears to be there at once. Now, this persistence of vision, as we call it, is very important. And let me just show you another demonstration to illustrate it. Here, we've got a black disc, uh, which has got a light behind it. And as you can see, one small hole. Now, I can turn that disc round by my hand. And those holes, as you see, go across the screen. Now, there's only one hole at any given time in front of the lamp. But if I turn this fast enough, those holes appear as lines going across. And now if I turn on the electric motor, you'll see the lines appear as actually a whole pattern. So that when the motor is going fast enough, you'll see not just separate lines, but a whole pattern coming through. I'm afraid the motor is not going quite fast enough now, but you can see the pattern beginning to emerge. Well, now, what we're trying to show you here, then, is that... Ah, oh, here comes the motor. Somebody's managed to switch the power on at last. Now, as that speeds up, now, can you see... You can see the whole pattern there, although remember that actually, at any given moment, there's only one hole in front of the screen. And we're relying on your persistence of vision to show you that. Now, let me just show you. Here's the actual pattern you've been looking at, and you've been seeing that through those holes. So there we are, then. Briefly, what I've been trying to tell you is this, that the television picture is built up of a series of electrical pulses. And then this is built up point by point, line by line, until we get the whole picture reformed on the screen. Because these are electrical pulses, we can change and modify them quite easily. In fact, we can take the signal from one camera and mix and merge it with that from another.